In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the binding energy per nucleon. And the example that we're going to do is we're going to calculate that for plutonium-239. So they've given us uh, a fair amount of information. They've given us the actual mass of plutonium-239. They've given us the mass of a proton, a neutron, and an electron. And they've given us the conversion factor between kilograms and AMUs. So our strategy is going to be as follows. The first thing we need to do is determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. We'll then take that information and use it to calculate the theoretical mass. So however many protons, neutrons, electrons there are, we'll add up the masses uh, from what we're given here, and that'll be what I call the theoretical mass. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna convert the actual mass that we were given from AMUs into kilograms, and we were given the conversion factor to do that. All right, so we've got the theoretical, we're gonna have the theoretical mass and the actual mass. What we call the mass defect is the difference between these two. So we're just gonna take what we got for the theoretical mass and subtract from that what we get for the actual mass. Okay, to get the binding energy, we'll just take the mass defect and plug it in for the mass and E is equal to mc squared. And the last step, to get the binding energy per nucleon, we're gonna take the binding energy that we got from step five and divide that by the number of nucleons, or that's just the same thing as the mass number. Okay, so uh, I break this down into a couple different steps. The first step is on the next slide. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons there are in plutonium-239. So to get the protons, we'd go to a periodic table and we'd see that the atomic number for plutonium is 94. And of course, 94 always tells us the number of protons. To get the number of neutrons, we'll take the mass number, subtract from that the number of protons, and so that gives us 145 neutrons. And we're dealing with a neutral atom, so the numbers of protons and electrons is always the same for a neutral atom. So we have 94 electrons, okay? So the next step, given what we found on the last slide and given the masses of protons, neutrons, and electrons, I'm gonna calculate the, what I call the theoretical mass. Um, so to do that, I'll take my 92 protons, multiply that by the mass of one proton, Okay, I have 145 neutrons. And then I have 94 electrons. Okay, and so when I add all of those up, I get for a theoretical mass, All right, and we're going to be sure to keep uh, enough digits. So I think uh, if we keep at least four uh, numbers past the decimal place, we should be okay. Okay, so here's our theoretical mass from the previous slide. What we're going to do next is convert the actual mass from, we were given it in atomic mass units, and we want that in kilograms. And we were given the conversion factor to do that. So I'll take my actual mass, So in order to get the AMUs to cancel, I need to put the 6.0221 times 10 to the 26 AMUs in the denominator, and then the one kilogram goes on top. So my AMUs cancel, and when I divide that out, I get an actual mass of 3.9696 times 10 to the minus 25 uh, kilograms. Okay, so here's the theoretical mass that we got from adding up the protons, neutrons, and electrons. This is the actual mass now converted to kilograms. 
So the mass defect is the difference between those two numbers. So all I need to do is take the theoretical mass and subtract from that the actual mass. So the mass defect that I calculate is 3.21 times 10 to the minus 27. And these are both in kilograms, so my mass defect will also be in kilograms. All right, so we're almost done. Two more short steps. Okay, so given the mass defect that we found before, in order to get the binding energy, we're going to take this mass defect and plug it in for the mass in E is equal to mc squared. Okay, so I can plug all that in my calculator. Don't forget to square the speed of light. Uh, that's a mistake that I see uh, pretty frequently uh, when students are working these problems. And so when I plug all that in, I get 2.89 times 10 to the minus 10. And when we do this E is equal to mc squared, uh, of course we need to be sure that the mass is in kilograms and the energy is going to be in joules. All right, so this is our binding energy. All right, and we're just one more step. Okay, here's the binding energy that we calculated in the previous step. All I need to do to get the binding energy per nucleon is take that binding energy and divide it by the total number of nucleons, which is the same as the mass number. So my binding energy per nucleon it's going to be 2.89 times 10 to the minus 10. And of course, the mass number uh, is given to us when they tell us it's plutonium 239. And so my binding energy per nucleon comes out to be 1.21 times 10 to the minus 12 joules.